It is that time of the week again when we review all of the ways in which the media cover themselves in glory with our great friend Katie Halper. She is host of the Katie Halper Show and co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast. Great to see you, Katie. You too. Um, Happy New Year, by the way. Um, we too. almost we we've made it, I suppose, to 2021. So know. yay we'll for see. who knows what's <laughs> going to happen that. though between now and then. Yeah, who exactly. Now, Very so. true. Um, so this was interesting. Caught my eye. Happened to be watching CNN. Not something that I particularly do all that often. But, you know, I recall CNN, MSNBC, all of these people were very much complicit in killing the idea and possibility of Medicare for all. It's so evil. It's so awful. It's so terrible. Now that we're in this situation where we're trying to mobilize this massive vaccine rollout and essentially falling flat on our face, falling way behind, I saw a doctor say that at the current pace of vaccinations, it will take 10 years to reach the level of quote unquote herd immunity. So that is not going well. And they brought in an expert on CNN to explain like what is going on here. And the answer was extraordinarily revealing. Let's take a listen. CNN did an analysis of government data. What we looked at is the daily vaccination rate per 100,000 people. Um, of course, since the U.S. is large, we have more vaccine out there, but we made it per 100,000 people. In the U.S., we have done 46. If you look at you, the U.S., that's 46 shots per day per 100,000 people. In Israel, that number is 608, obviously much larger. In Bahrain, 263. In UK, 60. We are doing better than Canada, where their number is only 10. And Brooke, there are several reasons for this, but you'll notice that these other countries, Israel, Bahrain, the UK, they have centralized national health services. Mm -hmm. I mean, so does Canada. But those three countries have centralized national health services. That helps. We can argue till the cows come home whether the U.S. ought to have a national health service, ought to have universal health care. But I think it's generally agreed that when you're trying to do a mass vaccination campaign, it is very helpful to have the infrastructure in place. These countries already, through their governments, vaccinate people. They didn't have to build an entire infrastructure to do so like we have in the U.S. Interesting. Isn't that interesting, Katie? And isn't it funny yeah. how even though at the end of the Democratic primary, the pandemic had already hit in full force and, you know, these conversations about vaccinations and healthcare were already very much happening, somehow this facet of why a national health care system or a single payer system would be useful never came up. Yeah, it reminds me a bit of after Bernie um, conceit, you know, dropped out. Uh, all of a sudden, people were acknowledging that maybe his uh, way was the right way, his take was the right take, and that uh, we really should have uh, listened to him. And again, it's like part of me is encouraged, like great, better late than never. It's also like way too little, way too late. And I was wondering if, I mean, one of the things I think, and this is this is if I'm giving them the kind of the benefit of the doubt and thinking that all of a sudden the media is being sincere as opposed to um, having dedicated themselves to help uh, squash Medicare for all and may not make it seem like the absolute requirement and bare minimum is that I wonder if it's just out of self-interest, you know, a uh, pandemic does affect everyone. Obviously, we've seen it disproportionately affect certain um, communities, um, people of color and the, and poorer people. But I wonder if they're just like, yeah, I may get this if we don't get this under control. Well, I think it's just that now that Medicare for all is not an actual threat or, or possibility, yeah. right. it's Off safe to yeah. be like, you know, you got a point, right. national health care system, that seems to be working pretty well for these other countries and getting the vaccinations yeah. out. Um, it reminds me of, remember uh, Joy Reid? After the primary was long over and done and finished, she actually came out and was like, you know, Medicare for all actually seems like kind of a good idea. I was like, wait right. a second. Yeah. But now yeah. it's like it's not even a theoretical possibility in a Biden administration. He's ruled it out. He said if it came to his desk, he would veto it. I know. I mean, so, do you think there's any chance of, of changing him or pushing him or moving him? No, no, right? I'm being so naive today. Why don't we just show up with a thing of, of COVID in a syringe? Sorry, that's probably illegal for me to suggest. But that would be a good way to make people get on board with Medicare for all or maybe, uh, you know, mobilizing the country, the government to do something. It is really outrageous, obviously. Um, and I, I am just curious, not that it matters that much, but maybe it does. 
for organizing the sake of organizing but i am curious what these people whether they're aware of this whether they like got the okay from someone to finally advocate for something as you said now that it's not a possibility or if it's a self-censorship thing i don't know I, as someone who's worked at msnbc i'm curious yeah think. i don't think it's that direct i think it's more right. now like before it was really clear where you're supposed to be on this thing right Bernie Sanders is the enemy, Bernie Sanders for Medicare for all, we're opposed to it. And we're going to find all of the like right-wing talking points. Do you remember that the debates were just a litany of right-wing talking points? All yeah. the framing yeah. was from the direction of like, well, what about the people who like their employer-based yeah, health exactly. insurance? What about them? Right. And it was Medicare all framed all in that direction yeah. rather than, oh, hey, what about the people who don't have health insurance? What about the yeah. fact that the current system is an utter, complete, immoral disaster? And by the way, with bad results, and by the way, we spend more money on it than any other right. developed Never, country yeah. in the world. Yeah. Like those questions were never asked because it was clear at that, at that point who was on which team and where you were supposed to be. Now that the threat of Sanders and that movement is neutralized, well, now you're allowed to have a, like an in, a non, more honest inquiry on the issue because ultimately right. it's not associated with which team you're supposed to be on and what, right. what function you're supposed to be serving in service of the establishment. Yeah, it really is unconscionable. Um, I, I was giving them the benefit of that for about two minutes. Um, I don't know why. I felt generous this morning or something. But uh, it is unconscionable, and it's... Uh, yeah, you sit. They sat by uh, when there was a possibility for this, and they uh, not only did they not endorse it, but as you're saying, they sabotaged it, perpetuated right wing talking points. Um, you know, again, the, even if they were going to sabotage Bernie Sanders, did they really have to sabotage Medicare for all? I guess that's a weird framing because obviously, if, if they were willing to do that, um, but uh, they they didn't. They don't have any moral compass. But um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we can shame them. I don't know if it's a lost cause. Uh, well, I think if we're going to derive some like silver lining here, which why the hell not? Let's go for it. Um, yeah, it's that people have really, I mean, over since the pandemic has started, people have changed their minds on Medicare for all. I mean, the, right. there's been a shift in the polling where it's more popular now than, and it was already popular. It's more popular right. now yeah. than ever. And the need is more manifest and harder to cover up and harder to hide than I think it ever has been before. Um, separate conversation, whether anyone is gonna actually like push that point and make it clear who's on which side, doesn't look so positive in that direction. But right. um, Katie, yeah. thank you so much as always for thank helping you. us break these things down. Thanks, Crystal. Absolutely, and happy new year to you. You too. We'll have more rising for you later today.